Right, Manchester United is through to the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup and obviously a team that has confirmed to go through besides Manchester United is none other than Newcastle after beating Leicester by two goals to nil at St. James's Park. So we are waiting to see the other teams and how they're going to go ahead and really prosper tomorrow as Man City plays Southampton, Nottingham Forest is playing Wolverhampton Wanderers. So those other teams will be really waiting for United or United will be waiting for them to see to it that really make it to the level of the semi-final and see how that double tie is going to go. And I think the draws are going to be held tomorrow when the games of football between those four teams are done. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? Rock and David is my name. Smash the like button, comment and share. And if at all you're watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. So don't forget to subscribe because we are left just 60 subscribers to hit 10,000 subscribers. And it will be nice to go ahead and really hit that milestone of 10,000. So today we are here with the, with the player ratings. We are done with the match reaction. If at all you've never, if at all you are not part of us, go to the live, <coughs> go to the live section. This is the first video that we really recorded today and don't, don't hesitate to watch it and really give us your reaction onto the match. Reaction that we really put up as United beat Charlton by three goals to near Old Trafford. Rashford with a breast, Anthony with a beauty in the 20th minute that put United ahead in that minute, in the first half to break that dreadlock because we looked a lot good with the ball in the first half. But we never really capitalized on our position in the final third to really score those goals. But finally, we made it to three. So, but there is something that Stat, Stat Mandev has really gone ahead to let us know that Manchester United have won eight consecutive home games in all competitions so far this season. This is the club's longest home winning run since December 2017. And Eric Ten Hag is really mastering this master. Craft to see to it that United are really getting back to where they're supposed to be. Now he's turning Old Trafford into a fortress, something that most of you will not even get to know. But this is how we were in the days of Salix Ferguson to an extent that in a season we could only draw one game or lose one game at Manchester United. Every team that really came to Old Trafford, they really knew that they are not going to survive. The most remarkable game that one can remember, if at all you've been watching football for a long time, or if, if at all you are not here, let me bring you up to speed. In the season of 2003-2004 Champions League, United goes away at Real Madrid, loses 3-1. You get? Madrid comes to Old Trafford. They beat us. We all we concede three goals in the first half, and we thought everything was done. Guess what? Ruth von Nostroy comes in, scores. I think it was a brace. Then David Beckham comes in and scores too and win that game by 4-2. And we are just one goal away from really going through. And that's what Ultra fought for you because no one would go ahead and really say the game is done. Not until the referee has blown the final whistle of the game. That's it. And that's what the referee really had to go. And United really got themselves to winning ways. So Ten Hag is bringing back this mentality that since 2017 we had known to won eight consecutive games and the ninth game that is coming in through is against city a very big test a game that i believe we are going to really make city fall on the sword of manchester united i really believe it i feel it i see it and i know it's going to happen so what are those eight games those eight games are <coughs> those eight games are one nil against west ham 2-0 against Spurs. 2-0 mm, against Burnley. 3-0 against Nottingham. 3-0 against uh, Everton. There is this other game we've just won here. 3-0 against Charlton. And there are eight games that we're going to hate to win. So allow me to get into the player ratings because the main reason as to why we are doing this story is to bring, to bring you player ratings of the people that really played in this game of football. Now, Tom Hitton in goal, waited for 20 years for his debut at Manchester United. He has been always at Manchester United. He won the youth trophy, the youth FA trophy 20 years back. That was, that was when he last appeared into United shirt competitively. He, in the preseason, he was there, but this time around, 
it was a competitive game of the Carabao Cup quarterfinal and he has thrown himself into a position of really winning it for United, keeping a clean sheet, ball distribution on point. He never put a hand wrong or a foot wrong. This guy deserves a very good score today. And I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. Do you know what it means? 20 years and you get a debut for Manchester United, a club that you've been supporting, a club you've been there for from your youth and at the age of like 36, 37 you get yourself that debut. What, 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 what a wait for him. 8 out of 10 for me, no doubt. Diego Delo went off the field of play. All of us, we are worried. Ten Hag told us that it's a precaution to get the player off the field of play. That is Diego Delo, and he was talking off the field of play in that was 30th minute, and then Aaron Bissaka came on through, but I'm going to give him a 6.5 out of 10. He really did it very well. He found, he found himself very many times in shooting positions. Fanny said that he even got a free shot in the Etienne's box area of Charlton, but he really never gave it the direct weight, never gave the ball the direct weight to find it in the back of the net, and it really went begging. That is a man known as... That is a man known as known as Diego Delo, and I'm giving him a 6.5 out of 10. We go to Malaysia, 6.5 out of 10 for me. Solid, decent, good on the ball, but I'm always demanding this, and I'll keep demanding it from him. I want to see him putting in more crosses and really doing some good cutbacks. You get as Luxio does. The rest of his game is okay, but his final product you get the final product or the end product to his game is really lacking. He should work upon it. And I believe Eric Ten Hag is going to go ahead and really do the needful to help this lad to become one of the best fullbacks in the world. Let's go to the central defense. Lisandro Martinez, 6.5 out of 10 for me. That's it. He was solid, hard, but you see some bit of rustiness that has not been playing football ever since they won the World Cup because they never played in the final. He last played in the semi-final game when they beat, is it Croatia, by two goals to nil. He never, never, never came back. He never played in the final. So he last played a game of football, I think, on the 15th of December. Then Ten Hag has just has been trying to bring him in slowly by slowly. He brought him on a game of Nottingham. He played some... He played some minutes for United. Was it Nottingham? I think it was not Nottingham. It was Bournemouth. He played some minutes. Um, in the game of Wolverhampton Wanderers, I think... Did he come on through? I think he came on through. And here is the first game he has played 90 minutes. I think the manager is just trying to prepare him to go on and prepare him for the game of City because it's going to be Rafael Verani and Lisandro Martin. 6.5 out of 10 for me. For Harry Maguire, I'm sorry to say he looked bad. I would have given him five, but for the interest of the central defense keeping a clean sheet, I'm giving him a six out of ten, but he really looked ugly. Harry Maguire looked ugly for me, so I believe he deserved a six out of ten. Let's go to the midfield. Scott McTominay, another cult put in that midfield area. It shows you how Scott McTominay is nowhere near the levels of being a CDM at Manchester United. If you can't go out and really express yourself swiftly and smoothly in that midfield of Charlton, not even a championship side, but a League One side, then when are you going to go ahead and really express yourself better? He really looked bad. He was losing possession. He couldn't control the midfield. Everything was known in drive because of him. He lacked a lot in his game. That's it. And I believe he doesn't deserve more than a six, according to me. Six out of ten for me for for, for Scott McTominay out of ten. Then let's go to Fred Rodriguez. He was really a roller coaster in that midfield. He was really at its epitome. He dominated it. Everything he wanted to do, he did it. He bossed the midfield. He was the midfield gen of the night. The engine room was in his hands. It was in his control. Everything that had to be done in that midfield, it had to be under his no all yes. <laughs> that is Freddie Rodriguez for you. He really looked great, and I believe he had even a free kick that was really well taken that really saw United really miss out on a goal because it was denied 
to be on target by the frame of goal. And he even had a chance that was just headed out of the net. Courtesy of that cutback from Ganacho. And these were his game by numbers. 100% crosses completed. 64 touches. 43 passes completed. 4 chances created. 3 shots. 3 long balls completed. 2 out of 3 tackles won. 2 interceptions. 1 bar hit. And 1 assist. That is Fred Rodriguez. For you remember, he was responsible for the first goal we scored against against Charlton. That color, that curling effort that came in through from Anthony, this man was responsible for it. And I'm giving him an 8 out of 10. He was really a roll coaster in that midfield. That is Freddy Rodriguez for you. Then let's go to the man that was playing ahead of Scott McTominay and Freddy Kobe Mino. Getting his debut for Manchester United, he really played very, very well. To me, he deserves another chance. But I don't know when he's going to get another chance. But I believe it's not far away from him getting it because Donny van de Beek is injured and the only player that can play into that position is Bruno Fernandes. Meaning that Kobe Maino with his strength and attributes, he has a chance to really future in there for you. That's it. It's not like Dan Iqbal because there are some other two players that are really reaching him to come in and play. You get but for this guy, he played very well and obviously made his debut at the age of 17 today. And today, three United players made their debuts. Facundo Pelestri, Kobe Maino, and Tom Hito. Now, Kobe Maino's debut by numbers versus Charlton. 86% passing accuracy. 35 touches. 23 passes completed. One key pass. One long ball. Much more to come from the youth international. And obviously, this guy is really special. And some players are just blessed. 8 out of 10 for me for Kobe Maino. And I think we'll talk more of this guy when he comes on through a lot. Because each and every time I come out and talk about him, people will say, Rokani just has an agenda on this player. He's just obsessed of this guy. But, you know, for me, if you are talented, I'll obviously be obsessed for you. And I'll always be calling for you to come in and play. Because I know what talent means. Ten Hag hinted about it that United in the recent past have been signing average players. These are players coming from the academy that were really talented and they lost on the way to the final team or to the first team. And these are many. Look at, look at Angel Gomez. He lost his way to the, Angel, <coughs> to the first team. Which other player? Mm, um, that's this suede left-footed guy. Also lost his way to the first team. Put in some good cameos. There are very many good players coming from the academy that really deserve to get playing time. But because we never had managers good at nurturing talent, these players were not given a chance. Now, let's go to a player known as Anthony. Came on through, scored a goal, taken off two games, two goals. One against Everton, one against Charlton. And these are very important goals because he breaks the dreadlock. For Everton in the fourth minute, he broke the dreadlock. Today against Charlton, he broke the dreadlock in the 20th minute of the game. And this were, all these were his game by numbers against Charlton. 88 passing accuracy, 33% shot accuracy, 21 passes completed, 4 dribbles, 3 shots, 1 goal, and obviously only Rashford has scored more goals for United this season than this guy. He's on fire. He's firing in left, right, and center. That is a player called Anthony. And I'm giving him a 7.5 out of 10 today. That is for Anthony. Let's go to Alejandro Ganacho. Ganacho, Ganacho. He really played a very fantastic game today. And to me, before Rashford came on, he was really a man, a man of the match contender. He ran, he ran towards the fullback of Charlton rentlessly. He he couldn't stop. He was like had an extra engine on him. Even in the 90th minute, Ganacho looks like he still has a lot more left in his tank. So he's really a guy that Ten Hag has transformed into become one of the best players from the Youth Academy of United. And this is what this is caused because of the path, the clear path that he has really created between the first team and the reserve team. If at all you are good enough, he gives you a chance. You show him that you are good enough. He keeps you into the team. So, Ganacho, for me, was really a beast into this game of football. And his game of numbers in the first half where he ranked best in dribbles, three. He had three shots, chances created, 
won and obviously he was the spark for Manchester United and I'm giving, I'm giving him a 7.5 out of 10 for him. That is Alejandro Ganacho. Then let's go to you, Anthony Elanga. 6 out of 10 for me. He had nothing to do because even Facundo Perez that came on through did a lot of things in those 5 minutes that he stayed on the field of play more than a player called Anthony Elanga. So Anthony Elanga, 6 out of 10 for me. 6 out of 10 for me. Then let's go to the substitutes that came on through. First and foremost, Aaron Juan Bissaka, 6.5 out of 10 for me. He came on for Dalo. Then Casimiro, masterclass, 8 out of 10 for me. He really had an assist, even in the second goal that Rashford scored, that really saw Pelestri create him that assist. Obviously, it was a very beautiful display. Diagonal pass from Casimiro, change or swift of play, very nice. He didn't put a foot wrong with an assist. 8 out of 10 for me. Ericsson, masterclass, put himself into better shooting positions. Ganacho got him on target, but obviously the defender really slid in and the goalkeeper really punched that ball into the corner. So Ericsson also an 8 out of 10 for me. So Facundo Pelestri, 8 out of 10 for me. No way I can go down a 10. Sorry, an 8 for me for that guy. And let's talk about Marcus Rashford. Rashford came on through for 30 minutes and this was his game by numbers. He scored his 15th goal, 15th goal of the season and in the Carabao Cup, he's just on fire. Every game he has played in the Carabao Cup, I think he has seen himself on target. He scored against Aston Villa, I remember. He scored against Burnley. He scored against... He scored against... Charlton, and obviously he's the man that is really on fire. That is Marcus Rashford. And he's putting him in a position of being the top scorer of this tournament. That's it. Now, his game was numbers. His game by numbers was 100 passes completed, 100 dubbers completed, 3 shots, 2 shots on target, 2 shots, 2 goals. That is Rashford in the form, in the best form of his life. And I'm giving him a 9 out of 10. Marcus Rashford is really on fire. And in the previous six games of United, he has gone ahead to score seven goals. That is Marcus Rashford, and I'm giving him a seven. I'm giving him a nine out of ten. Eric Ten Hag, eight out of ten for me. Trusting the young talent, making changes, resting very many United players. Obviously, eight starters. You get eight starters, but others came on through like Rashford, Eriksson, Casemiro. You get, but Martial. Rafael Veran, Bruno Fernandes never stepped on that field of play. So that means we are having close to four players fresh for the City game at Old Trafford on Saturday. So my man of the match is Marcus Rashford scoring a brace, taking us off those taunter hooks. He deserves it. Scoring a brace in just four minutes. That is great for the lad known as Marcus Rashford and let him keep up the form to see to it that really gets himself to that level of being one of the best in the world. Thank you guys for watching in through your reactions to my player ratings. I welcome the comment section below and tell me who do you think was your man of the match and the rest of the players. I've given Facundo 8, Ganacho, is it 7.5? So yours are welcome in the comment section below. Good night. See you later. I cover you all in the precious blood of Jesus Christ and the will protect you abundantly. Rock and David is my name. Remember, we are left with just 60 subscribers to hit 10,000 subscribers. Subscribe to this channel, guys. Good morning. Good night.